Hello everyone! Today we're going to be talking all about the newest festival addition to Stardew Valley, the Night Market. There's a lot of things to know, a lot of things to do, and a lot of things to not do. It occurs over the course of three days, winter the 15th to the 17th. And it actually has quite a bit to offer, so let's take a look. The first indication that the new festival is coming to town will come in the form of a letter. Starting tomorrow, a traveling merchant fleet will dock at Peloton Town for the yearly night market. The market starts at 5pm and will be in port for the next three days. Please visit the beach after 5pm to join the festivities. There's free coffee. You heard that right, there's free coffee. That's about enough for me to do just about anything. Also, ignore the date. You're supposed to get the letter on the 14th. Now the first thing you're going to want to know is that on the days of the festival, you won't be able to do any foraging at the beach. You won't find anything lying on the ground, you won't be able to check any crab pots. You can, however, still fish to your heart's content. You might even find a dinosaur egg, you never know. A few of the vendors are here before 5pm, but they don't really offer anything useful. The night market starts at 5pm. Visit me then for a free cup of coffee. Basically, the only thing you really can do here is warp back to your farm for 250 gold. Same thing you can do later, but saves you the walk. Now since the actual festival starts at 5pm, you're going to want to be there as close to that time as you can because while you're here, time still moves. So if you spend enough time, you will actually pass out and not get to enjoy everything there is to offer. Obviously, most importantly, it's the free coffee. Hello there, care for a cup of coffee? Yes, every 10 minutes you can get a cup of coffee. Why is this important? Well, because it's coffee. It'll actually sit in your inventory. So every 10 minutes, talk to them, load up on coffee, all you can eat. This is what's known as a decoration boat. It does sell seasonal mixed decorations that can be placed inside or outside of your house. Half of them are winter and Christmas themed, the others are simply seasonal that don't need to be watered, so they're actually pretty awesome. There's no limit to how many you can buy, and they don't change over the three day festival. This guy, as always, will simply send you home for 250 gold, and that's good because as time keeps moving while you're here, you want to spend as much time here as possible and warp home right before 2am, or you can just pass out. Clint is here, he's obviously not the main attraction. His biggest concern in his life is a doctor's appointment. The traveling merchant is here every day, she has her usual rotating wares. If you see something you like, as always, go ahead and buy it. Everyone needs a wallflower, pal. In fact, that's what I used to keep my children thinking they're in a safe space. Keep in mind while you're here, if you want to stop time, you can just open your backpack. As long as you're on single player, time will freeze. If you're on multiplayer, I believe it's going to still keep moving like it always does. This guy sells famous paintings. 1200 gold. He has a different one every day of the festival and they actually rotate over three years. So you're going to want to buy the painting every day over the three days, over a three year period, because there's nine in total. If you want them all, you're just going to have to do it. This Krobus looking thing is actually a vendor. Their inventory changes over the course of the three days. Every day is a little bit different than the day before. You can find garlic seeds, red cabbage seeds, and artichoke seeds, but not until year two, just like in the rest of the game. All the seeds here are the same price as Pierre's store, so don't think you're going to find a discount. The cone hat is a massive 5,000 gold, which is pretty expensive. I believe it's cheapest on day two. The price does vary. Either way, you're spending a lot of money for a strange hat. Now, if you make your way to the right side, the bottom right side, and walk along this ridiculously dangerous bridge setup, you'll be rewarded with the mermaid show. Which only gets weirder and weirder. I think you get it, but I'll let you experience this for yourself. The mermaid show is only open till 1230, so you're going to want to go ahead and see this one before then. Now, you might be wondering about these shells lined on the front. Well, it turns out there's actually a secret code you can play. And if you've managed to find the magnifying glass and done the secret note collection, one of these notes will actually tell you the code to the mermaid show. In particular, number 15, 15423. So if we press those, one, five, four, two, three, we'll be rewarded with fairies. Actually, what it really gives us is a pearl. I don't think this has any use. It's a rare treasure from the sea. Not as rare as a dinosaur egg, but it's up there. It's worth 2,500 gold in itself, so it's definitely one of the more valuable items in the game. Now for my favorite part, the fishing submarine. Before we get to that, more coffee, because always more coffee. One every 10 minutes, you might as well. Note to everyone out there, 5 p.m. till 11 p.m. Don't be late, otherwise you miss your fishing opportunity. So make sure you bring an adequate fishing rod along with lure and bait, because you're gonna wanna go ahead and make the most of this fishing. So for 1,000 gold, they'll take you to the bottom of the sea where you can catch unique fish talking to this captain, whatever he is, of a strange submarine. Now, it does take 30 minutes in game to get to the bottom. You can actually just open your backpack. It'll freeze time. That way you don't have to lose that precious half an hour. I would recommend doing this. It'll make a sound to indicate you're at the bottom. You will see the bottom of the ocean and the floor opens. 
Not sure how this works, but it does. At which point you can start fishing. There are three unique fish you can catch down here, one of which is quite valuable. It turns out you actually have a chance of catching the pearl while you're down here too. So if you can manage a few pearls, you'll be doing alright at 2500 gold apiece. If you're on single player, you can use the journal trick to freeze time while fishing to make the most of your precious time at the bottom of the sea. Not sure what that thing is, but I know you can't catch one. The first new fish we can catch is the Midnight Squid. The second being the Blobfish. This is the most valuable of all of them that you can catch, so you're going to want to find as many of these as possible. And because it's playing hard to get, we'll just pretend I caught it. The last one is the Spookfish. So the Spookfish, the Midnight Squid, and the Blobfish. Along with the three new fish, you can still catch the Sea Cucumber, the Octopus, and the Super Cucumber while you're down here, which means fishing down here can actually make you quite a bit of money. It's worth your time. Again, it's half an hour back up, so as long as you're on single player, open your inventory, and time freezes. Confirmed that on day 2, the cone hat is half the price at 2500 gold. There's also a stone parrot today, a suit of armor, and way at the bottom, the ever popular iridium fireplace for 15,000 gold. And in case you're curious of the value of the three fish, I'm going to sell one of each. And their value is as follows, 1230 for only three fish, that wouldn't take long to catch it all. The blobfish being far and away the most valuable at 750, the spookfish at 330, and the midnight squid at 150. If you manage to catch a few pearls in there too, you're making some money. Oh, and if you're wondering what the Iridium Fireplace looks like, it looks like this. I have a bit of a theory with this, because if you can get a coffee every 10 minutes over the 9 hours, that means you should be able to get a total of 54 coffees. I don't know what that's worth, but I want to find out. You can just show up to the festival, get as many free coffees as you can, and then leave. And that's just easy money. Yeah, you can make 8100 gold every single day just from free coffee. Do that over the course of the 3 days and you're looking at 24,300 gold. Just for showing up to the festival and taking your coffee. Alternatively, you could keep the 162 coffee and use it for speed boosts every day, basically forever. Either way, it's a good option. I feel that about sums up the night market. Free coffee is worthwhile. Fishing is good. There's a few things to buy there. Hopefully you have a better idea of what to buy, what not to buy. Get the free pearl while you're there. Hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching.